Okay, so in 1 John chapter 2, one of our key words is the word abide. And as we, I'm going to just going to break down each verse that uses the word abide. So in chapter 2, verse 6, it tells us that we should abide in him. And if we abide in him, we walk as he walked. In chapter 2, verse 10, it says that we are to abide in the light. And if we are abiding in the light, then we love our brother. In verse 14, we're told that the word of God should abide in us. And if the word of God is abiding in us, we are strong and we can overcome the evil one. In verse 24, he says, Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. And if what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, the fact that God is good, that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, and that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength, and our neighbors as ourselves, if we will let that abide in us, then it tells us that we will abide in the Son and in the Father. If we will let His Word abide in us, He will abide in us, and we will abide in Him. In verse 27, um, this is where we're getting into the Helper. I told you we would hit that again. That an anointing from God abides in us, and if that anointing from God abides in us, we will have no need for anyone to teach us because he teaches us. What does that mean? What that means is that the Holy Spirit is abiding in you and someone is trying to tell you how to be a Christian. You will know whether they're telling you how to be a Christian, how to walk like Christ, or whether or not they're telling you how to do it their way. There's a difference, okay? There is a difference, and you'll be able to recognize when that's going on, all right? Um, because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Anyone that tells you as a Christian that you can't understand this Bible for yourself, that's a red flag right there. Let me just throw that out there because Jesus himself said that he would teach you the anointing, the Holy Spirit. He would teach you repeatedly, not just in this verse, but even in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, God says, tells us that he himself will teach us that we don't have to have anybody else to teach us because he will teach us. He will tell us the truth. He will teach us truth. He will help us understand this book, his word, his commandments. He will teach us. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will keep us. He is our propitiation. He is our comforter. He is our helper. It is all about him. And if you will just abide in him and let his word abide in you, he will take care of everything else. Okay, now that does not mean that you do not need other people. That does not mean that iron does not sharpen iron. That does not mean any of that. It's just he is the one that is doing the teaching. And you recognize that. And that keeps you from following people. Okay, <laughs> it helps you know when you're following a person. And that person is not the person of Jesus Christ. All right. So there's my little rant there for a moment. All right, let's keep going. So what does the word abide mean in the Greek? That word comes um, from M-E-N-O with a little hash. It's not a hashtag, but um, a little flicky thing over the O. So I'm not sure how to say that. Feel free to look it up. Um, and that word means to stay, to wait for, to remain. To maintain unbroken fellowship with. It's rooted in. Love that. It is root to abide. Is rooted in. Knit together in the spirit. Received from him. To continue to be. To not perish. To last. 
one who cleaves and holds fast to something to permeate permeate and exerting power in to abide that is such an awesome word such an awesome word so when we continue to look at that word abide through um, all of first john these are just some notes that that i pulled i encourage you to go through the book let god teach you himself okay don't just take my word for it so he says that no one who abides in him sins no one who has his seed abiding in them sins he who does not love abides in death now you may be sitting here questioning right now well wait a minute i thought that we all fall short of the glory of god i thought we still um had sin yes you do but you know what you do with it the moment that it happens you bring it to the father you bring it to jesus you confess it and then he cleanses us and then it is gone okay so this word no one who abides in him sins this word sins is i'm sure we'll get into this later but this is like you can just hang out in it and not have any problems whatsoever if he is in you that doesn't work it just flat out does not work all right you're miserable and you know it all right so um the love of god cannot abide in someone who closes their heart to a brother or a sister in need can't do it if we love one another god abides in us the one who keeps his commandments abides in him the spirit of god lets us know if he abides in us he he lets us know you know if you have the spirit of god in you whoever confesses that jesus is the son of god then god abides in him and he in god listen to that whoever confesses that jesus is the son of god then the spirit of god abides in him and he in god it's that simple y'all it is that simple there's no hoops you have to jump through to be holy spirit filled you are filled with the spirit when you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior when you confess him as the son of god you are holy spirit filled all right the one who abides in love abides in god and god abides in him you gotta have love you gotta abide in love okay um it's just god is love we're gonna talk more about that later so um john chapter 15 is a beautiful cross reference for the word abide and you know this is when christ was here when jesus was here walking among us and teaching his disciples and the key the key verse for for me in that whole passage is that if you do not abide he who does not abide in me can do nothing he who abides in me bears much fruit apart from him we can do nothing so you know he wants us to abide in him and he wants to abide in us that is the beautiful thing about our god is he wants us he wants you he wants to be a part of your life he wants you to be a part of his he wants to abide in you and he wants you to abide in him i mean it's just he wants you it's just crazy i mean how many people walk around living day to day feeling unwanted when they have a creator right there that wants them so much he was willing to die for them you are wanted you're wanted okay um so i think that pretty much sums up first john chapter 2 i will um just read through these last few verses here beginning with verse 12 
He says, I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, because you know the father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in this world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the father but it's from the world. The world is passing away. Also, it's lust, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you heard the, that Antichrist is coming, even now many have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it would be shown that they're not of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you all know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise which he himself made to us eternal life these things i have written to you concerning those who were trying to deceive you as for you the anointing which you received from him abides in you and you have no need for anyone to teach you but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you you abide in him now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. We do not want to shrink away from him in shame. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. You can know and you can practice righteousness and truth and love because you can abide in him and he can abide in you. True believers, true believers love Jesus. They keep his word. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can know that you know. Do you know? Do you know? If you don't, ask him. He's right there, ready to answer that question. He's right there, ready to let you know. And he's right there ready to be the propitiation for your sins and to stand faithfully for all eternity as your advocate before the Father. He wants you. I'll see you next time.